value is going down because of the law of supply and demand. And the businesses know this. Everyone is aware of this phenomenon, but we can't change these dollars. So the change happens in another form. The buying power changes. What we usually see is the price of goods and services, whether it's the massage or it's going to the doctor or it's buying a PlayStation, what happens is goods and services go up. The price of those items go up to make up for the difference. The guy that sells you pizzas, I probably should just draw on a pizza, but who knows, realizes that the money supply is going up and the value of that money is going down. He knows that although he's got a $10 bill in his pocket, it's not really worth $10, although it says it's worth $10. So what he does is yesterday or a year ago, he charged you $9 for a large pizza. Well, when we print more money, he decides I need to start charging $10. Now there's a lot of different, it's very complex. There's much more details of things connected to who he's buying and who he's buying goods from and where this whole process starts because he's buying pepperonis and he's buying dough from somebody and he's paying an employee and there's a whole chain of events that happen and it's very complicated. The simplest way just to look at it is to accept it and know that when supply of money goes up, the price of it goes down, although we know that the actual face value doesn't change. So what has to change, because we can't change this, is goods and services. The things that you buy, the value of it goes up. So I used to be able to buy pizza for $9. Now I can't get that anymore. I gotta spend $10. And you realize your money does not buy what it used to. And it does not buy the same because its value has gone down. The buying power changes. It still says $300, but when we change the supply, its actual price or value goes down. This is inflation. This is pretty natural. This happens. That pair of shoes that you desire, it was $300, now it's $400. The shoe is still the same. They did not add a new lace. They did not add a new strap. That strap was there last time when it was $300. The shoe has not changed one bit, but what has changed is the supply of money. It has gone up. So an example would be 200 or 150 years ago, they said, you know what? Instead of just gold backing dollars, gold and silver will back the dollars. So now we can have more dollars in the economy and more dollars in the economy increases the supply. That means its actual value goes down. You can't rewrite this to say, no, this is only actually worth 10 bucks. Let me change that 20 to a 10. Can't do that. What happens is the market adjusts and the market realizes that inflation is happening. And so the market raises the prices of goods. Same $300 shoe. Nothing has changed with the shoe. They've raised the price because they are compensating for the change in the value of the money. Hopefully some of this is starting to stick and you have seen this in your life. You may remember five, 10 years ago when you went and you would buy a Coca-Cola at the gas station and maybe you used to be able to get it for 99 cents. Now when you go get a Coca-Cola, it costs a dollar 15 or any other different thing. There are many different ways that businesses and the market adjust to inflation. This is very natural. I've seen, I, for a time, most of the time in my life when I was a kid, sodas were 50 cents. Sometimes you could get them for cheaper, like 35 cents, but those days are gone. If I buy a can of soda, it's usually 80 cents now. The Coke is still the Coke. It is the same, it has not changed. It's just like this is the same pair of shoes. What has changed, is the supply of money has gone up and the price has gone down on the money. But we can't change the money. You can't change a dollar. So what to do to compensate for that is it turns the prices of goods have to go up because I used to get a Coke for 50 cents. My money is not worth as much anymore. So I got to spend more. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Now you're probably saying, all right, this is dumb. Why? Why would you just print a bunch of money if it's just going to kill the price? Well, the first thing we've already talked about, when you put more money in the economy, people can spend it and it creates jobs. 
It kind of helps. It definitely helps in times of disaster. And it's not that terrible of a thing as long as you don't print too much money. If you keep it under control, you're going to be fine. But it does sound pretty stupid that why would you print too much money if it's just going to devalue it? Why would the government ruin money? That sounds really stupid. Or not even just ruin it. Why would they just devalue the money? It doesn't make any sense. Now, like I said before, for some people, devalued money is better than no money. That's actually a lot better than nothing at all. So you might as well print something because we're trying to stimulate the economy. This guy, he doesn't care if a dollar's not worth what a dollar used to be. Oh, a dollar's only worth 50 cents. I've got none of them. So I don't care if lowering the value of the dollar means I'll get some dollars, then I'm all about it. And that was really what was happening during the panic of 1893. A lot of the country was in desperation mode and they needed money in the economy. They needed some sort of stimulation because anything was better than nothing. So that's an example of why supply going up and its value going down ain't so bad. Here's another reason. The government has to pay for wars. This one is an issue in modern day. Maybe not so much during the Panic of 1893, but this is another big issue topic that is very important. The government, war is not free. Not only do they pay for soldiers, but they got to pay for this helmet. They got to, and look, you don't get helmets for free. They got to buy helmets from the helmet company. They got to buy this gun from whoever makes the gun, Smith and Weston. I don't know. Whoever they make the gun. Governments don't make guns. Governments don't make helmets. Governments don't make uniforms. And even if they do, because sometimes the government says, well, we're in this big war, so we've got to start making war supplies. So we're going to make our helmets and we're going to make our guns and we're going to make our uniforms. All right, cool. So the government's going to make it. All right, we don't have to pay any. Well, yeah, you do. So if the government is going to make it, they have to have workers that make this uniform. They have to make, so they're paying money there. And then also the fabric that went into this, they had to buy it from a cotton farmer. The, the, the parts that went into the gun, they have to buy that from the individual manufacturers of those parts. It costs a lot of money. A tank. Do you know how much money a tank costs? War is very expensive. It costs the government a lot of money. And it's not a thing that you really want to be cheap about. If you are cheap, then you run the risk of losing the war. So look, if you want to be cheap when it comes to like, look, dudes, I don't eat out. I save my money at home. I'm not wasting my money on going to fancy dinners. You guys can blow 30 bucks every night at Chipotle. I'm not doing that. I'm going to sit at home and eat bologna sandwiches. That's cool. That's a place where you can be cheap. But war is not necessarily the thing you want to be cheap. Oh, you know what? We'll be cheap. Let's just, uh, we'll only give the guy a couple of bullets. We'll save. You don't need 20 bullets. You just need five. And then he dies. All right, well, you know what? You don't need like a, a, a metal helmet. Can't we just make that out of plastic? And then he takes a bullet and his brain blows up. They don't want to do that. You want to spend the money. So where does the money come from? The government can tax us. They can raise taxes. And when they do that, it's good because they get the money from you and they spend it on the war. That's awesome. That's one way you could fund the war so you can win it. But the problem is when a politician or the government raises taxes, then it's very unlikely that we are going to vote for them again to go to the House of Representatives, even during times of war, folks. Even during times of war, if the government raises, because that's where we are right now, we've been in a war for the last 20 years, and if the government raises taxes, you are very unlikely to vote for these politicians. You don't want to vote for those guys. You're not going, you raised my taxes. Yeah, but it was for the war. I don't care. Don't raise my taxes. Find another way to pay for it. And guess what? They do find another way to pay for it. And this one's much worse, and this is much more nefarious and odious. So inflation, folks, is a hidden tax. You don't realize this. Most Americans don't realize this. And this is how we fund a lot of the wars because our government does not have the guts to raise taxes because they're afraid, I'll lose my job and I'll no longer be a representative and I won't have power and I'll just have to go home and cry. Doesn't want to do that. And it's right. If you raise taxes, we probably will not reelect you. What they can do, those tricksters, is print more money. And they print the money and then they spend the money on the war. They can't do that. Yes, they can do that. And yes, they do do that. It's much easier than this because sometimes you have to go to your, your constituents. You've got to go to your people and say, hey, I want you to 
vote for me so I can raise taxes, or I want you to support me raising taxes to vote. People will say no. Maybe you get 40% of the country to agree with that, but most people will not. Over here, you don't have to ask anybody. The government simply prints the money and then spends the money, and you think, well, that's cool, no big deal. Just print the money, spend the money, start throwing. Wrong. What happens when they print the money? They print the money, the supply goes up. And what happens to the value of the money? It actually goes down. And so over here, in this case, at least it's honest. At least the government is just stealing from you. In this situation, what the government is doing, they don't take your money. They just make your money worth less. It's still in your bank account. They don't take the money from you. Right here, they honestly just take it from you. Over in this situation, what they do is they print a bunch of money, they spend a bunch of money, and then you realize, oh wait, that $100 I have in the bank, it's really only about $75 now because the government printed a bunch of money of which I never agreed to. At least over here, you can punish your representative. You can vote them out. Over here, you never know that they do it and there's no way of you ever stopping it. Hidden tax, that is probably the darkest side of today's lesson, which happens with inflation. Government takes your money, government devalues your money. They get their money one way or the other and you lose your money one way or the other. So you're gonna lose either way. At least let me know I'm losing. Just raise the taxes. Okay, let's keep going into this. Let's dive in deeper and deeper and let's see if some of this eventually sticks. Let's talk about some crazy scenarios. The bank loans you money, $300. And when they loan you money, there is a finite or a definite supply of money based on the gold supply. Then all of a sudden, the government decides, you know what, we're also going to print money for silver. And so now we have money here, we have money here. And what we have done is printed money, we have increased the money supply, which means the actual value of that money has gone down. So that $300 is no longer work the same thing. Um, that kind of stinks for you, but not really, because it actually makes it easier for you to pay back your loan. And they loaned out 300, but in reality, now they get $300 bills back. But as we know, when we have inflation, sure, you have $300 bills, but we know that those 300 aren't really worth 300 anymore because we have created inflation. This is not good for the banks. It's actually kind of good today. I've talked about inflation's happening and it's kind of bad, but if you take out a loan for $100,000, a fixed mortgage rate, and then you pay that loan back in 30 years, sure, the interest is gonna go up and that's gonna hurt, but with inflation, you're not really even paying back because this $100,000 number never changes. It does not change as long as your interest rate is fixed. You actually pay back less if there is inflation. It actually hurts the banks, but don't worry about them. They've got a plan figured out. The banks and the rich and the wealthy and the elite, they don't want inflation. They do not want, this is during that time of the panic of 1893 and during the progressive era and the populace wanting to push for coinage of silver. A lot of the elites don't want this. They don't want to increase the money supply because that's going to devalue the money supply. Because at this time, who has all the money? The banks and the wealthy people. They control it. If you print more, then the money that they control is going to go down. They don't want you to mess with their money. They want to stick to this gold supply because they control it all. And the value of it is very strong because the supply of it's really low. If you add more money to the supply, sure, it's going to help out this guy and the regular people that can buy more. But the bank, the money that it has in the vault today, it's all going to go down. The value is going to go down because you printed more money. Look at this some more. Again, gold is backed. The dollars are backed by gold. Again, if you need to fast forward because you've got this, more power to you. But I'm going to go on it over and over and over to make sure at some point it sticks for some people. So the bank loans money to you. You pay the money back. We Gucci. $300 is $300. We're fine. They loaned you $300. You paid back $3. We have a constant supply. The supply is connected to gold. $300 is $300. All right. Let's mess around. They loan you $300. All right. So they have now loaned out $300. And then the government prints more money. Supply has gone up. The price of it's gone down. Purchasing power has gone down. 
$300 is actually $200 delivered. It's still the same $300 bills. It's not worth the same. When you pay them back, are they still getting $300 back? No. Sure, physically they are, but the money that they are getting back pays less. That's what happens when they loan out and the supply increases in the middle of the process. They loaned out 300, but technically they only got 200 back in return. That is not good for them. They're mad. You mad, bro? They're mad. And this guy's like, I like this system. Print more money. I can buy more things. It's easier for me to pay off my loans. Get to printing, government. As long as you don't print too much. Just easy on that gas pedal, but get back on that gas pedal. Now you're probably saying, who cares about the bank? Who cares about the rich? Who cares about the wealthy and the elite? Why are you sticking up for it, man? They're always sticking it to the man. Why do we care if we have inflation? All right, well, first of all, we need to make sure that we see things from both sides. The rich, wealthy guy, maybe he's not all that bad. I know we like to think that, oh man, he grew up swimming in a pile of gold. He's been doing that his whole life. The